used to go about with uh, five other lads. We would be around 13, 14 years of age. We were wandering around the park and we saw these girls down, a bit 20 yards down in this valley. And um, I was watching the group playing in the in the valley and I, I said to uh, this, the, the girl Margaret and, and I just said, who is that girl down there? And uh, she turned around and she said, which one? I told her which one I was looking at. And she said, that's my sister. That turned out to be Mary. And I just said to her, and um, now walk it home. So that's how we actually met. We'd been married. We had a house. We were fortunate we had a house. It was hard, the later period of uh, Mary's life. The family knew that Mary was uh, in a very bad way, that uh, we simply had to get used to the idea that she was going to leave us. It was hard. It was frightening because you would be speaking to her without knowing if, if she was taking it in. Nobody really understood, but she was tremendously strong inside. On the day, I was there, the girls were there, and I spoke to her and she gave a little just a little shrug like that. So I knew, without a doubt, she could hear. She could hear me then at that moment. Her head's here. And I've got my lips inside her ear. And very, very slowly, her right arm came up, very slowly, just like that, until it came round and it just rested on here. I think that was Mary's goodbye. I never forget that. Never. I'm not without Mary. And ultimately, I hope. I expect that we will meet again. How could I not go to the Crimble? I leave the house where Mary is. I'm travelling there. I'm enjoying the meal. I do think of her when I'm eating now and again, just remembering when she would be there. I go because sometimes, because they still set the table for me and Mary. <laughs>